Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Uh, please introduce yourself to the viewers. Hi, I'm Riley Foster. I'm a footballer for the Ripple FC Women. I'm part of the Senior Canadian National Team as well, and I'm a goalkeeper. Nice. So, Riley, can you take us back in time where uh, football uh, started for you? Um, honestly, I want to say it's like the day I was born. I was introduced to um, the game, and I think it's just like having my first kit as an infant. Um, there's pictures of me probably at eight months old, running down the hallway with the ball at my feet. So introduced very young, but like properly organized, I'd say at the age of four, just in Ontario, um, the typical like Tim Bits League, um, chasing balls to pugs and nothing organized really, but then it grew from there from Cambridge and on out. And did you end up going to college or university? I went to university in America. I went to WU, uh, West Virginia University. I did three and a half years there. I played four seasons. Um, I think recently graduated in 2019, uh, December 2019. So in 2019, what did you graduate with? I went to school for a, I started off with a genetic engineering <laughs> major, but I went to a completely different direction and did sports management. Um, and then I got a double minor in strategic social media and coaching. Yeah, and you said you started playing um, or, or um, organized at four years old. So where did that stem from, from your mom's side or your dad's side? Or both? Uh, I'd say my dad's side. My dad's parents are from Liverpool, England themselves, and he's always played football as well. So I definitely think it was one of those easy ways to kind of throw me into an activity, burn a lot, all the energy I had, because I was a very like loose cannon when I was younger. They didn't know how to control me, my parents. So Soccer, football was the best way to put me in there, but definitely my dad's side. Okay. And what 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 sacrifices did you have to make? You and your family actually have to make. So I'd say my sacrifices are part of the job. I wouldn't consider them sacrifices because of where I am now, and I consider it part of the journey. Um, but as any teenage girl, any teenager going through the high school system and everything. And you lose that um, ability to kind of build friendships and uh, connections with your peers, like go to parties and stuff. I, I never really had the experiences to do that. I was on the road to the OSA probably seven days a week. Uh, I would leave school early, get back at 12 a.m., repeat every single day. I mean, I live in Cambridge, Ontario, so it's an hour and a half drive just to get there. Uh, my sisters and my dad or my mom, depending on who was driving that day, my dad would leave work early to come pick me up from school, bring my sisters with him, my sister to do their homework in the car with me. They spend the whole day at the OSA Center, probably causing havoc, but that was our life for probably a good five to six years of my football. And on top of that, my sisters played at a high level. Like they were in the academy setting and like the OISL a little bit. So I would say it's a massive sacrifices. They kind of put their whole life on hold. And now I can see them do everything they wanted to do, travel, my sisters are in school now and doing all the fun stuff that I'm sure when they were younger, they definitely <laughs> hoped for one day. Yeah, and just to tap in a little bit about friendships, you know, um, how hard was it to keep a friend? Do you still have friends from back in the days or is it just in the, in the, in the, in the bubble of soccer? Yeah, I definitely say it's in the bubble of the game and, a lot of my connections that I still have today are from maybe like one or two from provincials and a couple of girls from the national team that I've like been through with. But even still, it's really hard to maintain those relationships when you're so far, far away. I have one good friend who um, played with me at school. She came and transferred in, uh, Jessica Lisi. She was in the, um, the OSA center with me as well. She played provincials with me. So we're quite familiar with each other. We've grown up together. We played the game together. We played the same club together. So that, I'd say, is one person I've definitely bought bonded with but everything else is I don't have anything from home like friendships from home don't exist for me um and I, I kind of I like that because when I do go home I get to completely like switch off I get to be with my family recharge and I don't have to worry about oh I gotta go see this person that person it's just me my family a complete relaxation mode that's amazing are you still playing with the Canadian national team yeah so I've had my first two call-ups for the senior team the last two camps um, and now I'm just waiting for my next opportunity in the next camp. Uh, they're building up for the Olympics. So hopefully I get my call up. If not, I'm always ready, but it's good to be a part of the group. It's good to help them get towards the, the finals. Yeah, it's amazing. So what, at what age did you sign your first professional contract at? 
I signed my first contract last year in 2020, so I was 21 at the time, okay. um, and that was Liverpool. So, so you're t congratulations on that. You're a 2000 baby. Uh, 99, 98. Oh, 98. Okay, okay, okay. So back when you, so you signed, you said you signed at 20 or 21, 21, right? 21, yeah, last year. Last year, so you signed at 21. Oh, 22. No, 20, 21. 21. So you, so you signed 21 to, to Liverpool. How was, how'd you feel about it? Yeah. It was a dream come true for me. I've been a long time supporter of the Reds. So for me to kind of, I never actually thought I could play for Liverpool. I always thought it was out of my reach. I thought it would be something that I would like strive for within my career and maybe end off my career at, but I never thought like my first contract would be the club of my dreams and the city of my dreams. Also where my family kind of originated. My dad's parents are from Liverpool, specifically Wavertree, and they meant so much to me, the connection that we had. And they were the ones who introduced like the passion for the city and for the club to my life so for me to kind of complete that full circle it, it just means so much more and I've always been someone that kind of prided my family roots so to be able to represent my name and my family's name in the city where it has originated is just like really special to me hearing you never walk alone um is like it gives me chills every time I hear it, it never like it never phases me at all like I can't shake that feeling ever um but yeah it's just an honor honestly and it's a big moment for my family and also to be able to now be with the club for three more years is another big moment nice so did anything change once you signed or was it the same it was just like all right let's keep going yeah like for me I think I was very fortunate to come out of college playing all four seasons, started every single one and had a really good record. Um, I, I liked the competition, the challenge. So when I got into Liverpool, it was, okay, who do I have to take down next? Like, who do I have to keep on pressing? How do I get my spot? And my mindset never changed. It was just keep on knocking away and keep chipping away at the pieces. And eventually I'll get to where I want to be, which is like the number one keeper for the club and a well-known keeper in England and also Europe and the world. Um, so not necessarily anything's changed. It's just become more realistic. I'm, I'm now here. It's just, how do I keep on getting to where I want to be? I want to be in the world cup. I want to be in the Olympics. I want to be in the world for Canada. How do I keep doing that? And my mindset's always been number one, number one, number one. And I always train like I'm the number two because I just want so much. Um, yeah. so I think it just made me work harder because now I have it and it's right all at my fingertips. Mm. And you were saying before that it was kind of like out of reach so how'd you align yourself for that to be an opportunity for yourself um my agent just like he knew I wanted to play in England and because I have the ability to play in England through my passport my grandparents being from here mm. um <laughs> he was just like what clubs do you want to play for and I literally listed I think I had Tottenham on the top Chelsea West Ham and like clubs where I thought I would fit in perfectly like with my playing style also with how they're playing I can I knew I could come and affect the team I can come in and make a big influence and to me Liverpool was just like I knew before in the history that like they have two WSL championships like I thought oh like they should be sound their goalkeeper you know I'm gonna just go and press other ways and see if they'll like get their attention and he was like well why don't you want to talk to Liverpool and I thought I want to go there like that's my that's where I want to be but I don't know if I can get there. And he was like, well, let me see what I can do. And yeah, next thing you know, I'm getting a contract in Liverpool. And it's like That's happened amazing. overnight, basically. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I hope uh, <laughs> 20, 2022 Olympics, I hope that goes through for you as well. And then the World Cup. Um, so. Uh, Lost my fingers. Yeah. So what did, did you do anything like differently to get where you wanted to go? Or did you just stick to the basics and master the basics? Um, I think my mindset would probably be the thing that separated me. My dad did a really good job at when I was young, putting someone in front of me Like in the Ontario program. I was always kind of like the underdog. And he always kind of told me these two are your, these two are in front of you right now. Like go get them, beat mm -hmm. them down, beat them out, be number one somehow beat them out in every session 
and every session I would show up and I was better than them. That was my mindset. I have to be better than these two, whether it's with my distribution, something, I have to be better than them at something and be consistent with it. So my training mentality separates me from the rest. Um, a lot of people can show up to training and they're just good. Um, they get away with maybe having an off day, whereas I never accepted off days. I never accepted bad sessions because to me, like that's a day where the coaches can see, okay, she's not consistent or she's not really wanting to be here. Whereas what I did was I took that into my own control. Um, my mindset off, off the pitch as well. Like, I do a lot of research. I watch the game like crazy. I, I understand every position so that when I'm communicating, I can separate myself from the rest. And I think just the commitment that I've had to put myself through tough positions, separate myself from my family and move away from home goes to show how committed I am. And I know a lot of people in England, they have everything at the fingertips here, but they're not willing to go explore other options. Whereas Canadians or anyone from North America really have no choice but to kind of go abroad and experience something. So I've definitely put myself in those situations. I've committed to the hard stuff and yeah, my mindset has just separated me from everyone. Yeah, let's dive in a little more into consistency. How do you keep consistent in your mind? How do you tell yourself, let's keep consistent? Let's keep doing, let's have a, a good consistency flow of distributing the ball to, the, to your defenders or to whoever on the field. How do you keep that consistency? I think for me, it's, it stems from the training pitch. Um, you can't control what's going to happen in games at all because they're, the variables are so inconsistent. Like you're never going to get the same thing over and over again. But when I'm on the training pitch, when I'm doing my reps, I'm making sure that every single rep I do is 100%. My focus is 100% there. I may not execute perfectly, but what I can control is the consistency of my mindset and my focus and how much effort I put forth. I live by this model of showing up every day and giving 100% of whatever's in my tank. I might be completely exhausted and only have 20% left, but I'm going to give 100% of that 20 because I know that I'm controlling my output. I know that I'm giving every little thing I have to get better. And I think that's really the only thing I can do to maintain consistency. I can do all the research behind the scenes. I can do all the film. I can study the game like crazy and train hard. But until you give 100% of what you have or what you are, you're not really going to get that consistency. And when you start doing that every single day is when you're going to start to grow. Of course. And to dive into when you're watching the game, are you just watching the goalkeeper or are you watching the whole play? I watch everything. I watch the movement off the balls and stuff. It, it helps me when the ball's at the goalkeeper's feet or in their hands. But what I'm looking at a lot is the player's movements off the front line, the midfield line, because I want to be able to see things quicker in my own game. So when I see players moving off in certain formations, it helps me get an idea of what I should be looking for and what other keepers, like Allison Becker does a really good job of finding the counter attack and finding his midfielders or forwards popping off the line and going behind. And I want to be able to do that as well as he does. So it's that, and also just normal phase of play, how teams attack in certain formations and what their specialties are. I watch both the men's and women's game, but I like seeing things played quickly because I can anticipate things when I'm popping in goal as well. Mm. So it's a bit of everything, really. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And what, what, what age would you say that you started watching and analyzing football at? Because it's a given at Liverpool, yes, but what age did it start for you? Um, a young age. I mean, I was up every weekend watching EPL, like 7 a.m., Tim Hortons on the table uh, with my dad. So I, I don't necessarily, I can't remember the last time I watched it for fun. Like, I can't mm -hmm. tell you the last time I enjoyed watching a game and just like wasn't thinking about everything. Because even still, it could be the most random match on and I'm still like, Ooh. I could be watching kids games. I'm like, oh, you see the movement off? Like, see that pass? Like, oh, I can't, like, I can't not. I'd probably say like beginning of high school, Maybe actually no, because Ontario really made me look into it more. Eighth grade, seventh grade, maybe. Wow, that's that's pretty young. And yeah. I like the point that you said you can't watch it. Like you don't watch it for fun. Like it's you're always analyzing something. Yeah. That's powerful. And yeah. what age did you start like watching yourself so you could improve yourself? Oh, like probably seventh, eighth grade because my dad would record my sessions or I'd have other, yeah. I was recording everything and we were comparing like my technique to other techniques. And we just, like, even in the Ontario days, they would record all of our sessions as well. So I was always watching film back of games. And then I was in the national team at the age of 14. So 
we had film every time all of our sessions were filmed from there so I was exposed to that kind of stuff early and it hasn't stopped I record all my practice sessions here all my actual sessions here sometimes I even record my gym sessions just to see my form and I just want to make sure I'm doing everything as perfect as I can get it to or if I need to correct anything yeah that's amazing okay so what are three <laughs> tips that you would uh, share with aspiring uh, soccer players growing up right now that want to become professional soccer players Three tips. Um, I think my main one, like my motto that I live by is give 100% of whatever you have every day. It could be 60%, it could be 80%, but give 100% of that. And I think that's just something so important. Um, to be a professional in any environment, you got to work hard. You got to commit to the hours. You got to commit to the days and the long nights and the ups and downs. Like this first year of being a pro has been the hardest thing ever. But the one thing I didn't do is like, bow down to everything I kind of just like stood up and raised my game even more I became so much more resilient in the mind and the body and everything so I think resilience is so important and just sticking through those hard moments and committing to the hours and the last one I would be make sure you're still having fun with it because the moment you stop having fun is a moment you're not going to want to keep getting better. Like I enjoy pushing myself to limits. I enjoy, I put myself in sessions with professional men goalkeeper every three days a week. And I enjoy like pushing and seeing where I can get and pushing them in that competition environment. And I enjoy getting better and playing the game still. And, and if you don't do that, and if you don't enjoy the game anymore, you're not going to want to put yourself in the situation and you're just going to plateau or even worse, just decline. So yeah, hundred percent of whatever you got, be resilient, don't give up, and have fun with it. Yeah, thank you for those three tips. Um, and you mentioned an agent. Were you with your agent? At what age were you with your agent? Uh, because of NCAA rules, I couldn't sign with my agent until literally my last, last game. So I finished my last game, which is a Sweet 16 match. Um, the next day I signed my agent's contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, with, you was can communicate communicating since yeah. understood understood yeah. did you were you connected uh, to your agent beforehand for a long period of time before signing with with them or did you guys know each other from 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 time or how is that yeah i was connected early like uh probably freshman year going in um he connected with my dad early mm -hmm. on and then from there I just kind of yeah, yeah. made sure like I was sending in my fit my clip stem still because you're allowed to communicate with agents you just can't verbally agree to anything um so I did the, just that I made sure I had all the seeds planted so that when I I knew when I graduated in December I wanted my contract in January that I didn't want to break I wanted to be in the January transfer window and um yeah that's exactly what happened <laughs> yeah very very organized very planned out and now you're reaping the fruits of the benefits. Yep. What's what's the saying? You're you're reaping the fruits yeah. of the is that the saying? Yeah, saying? I'm not too good with saying, so I gotta be honest. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um okay, so your dad, I want to talk a little bit about your dad because your dad was really involved and he knew what he was doing. On top of that, from what I'm hearing, is like he was filming games from a young age. So he was was he involved in soccer? You said he was involved in soccer, right? back in his time yeah he was involved like at a decent high level. yeah and then um was also pretty high level of hockey like semi-pro or double a i don't know what they call it triple mm -hmm. a i don't know coach hockey as well um and then he also was a semi-pro golfer uh, i've been really wanting i really want to go but yeah <laughs> so um so would you say the support from your family and things that your dad did really propelled you forward yeah, I would say it gave me a direction because I, I had the mindset, I had the technical, the tactical, I had the ability, I had, I have talent. Um, but I'm very fortunate to have a family who invested in me, um, who saw my potential and, and who knew that if I, like my dad, at I was 12 years old, he sat me on the countertop, but my mom there too, they both sat me out and they said, what are your goals? What do you want to do? Like, where do you want this to go? It's when my career kind of became steered. I was leaving Cambridge United, leaving the hometown, leaving my dad coaching, like leaving everything. He goes, well, what are your goals? We will, we will help you through anything. And I told him right there. I said, 
I won Division One scholarship to UNC. I didn't go to UNC, but I beat UNC, so it's good enough. Um, <laughs> and then I said I wanted to play in the World Cup Canada. I want to be in the senior team, and I want to go to the Olympics, and I want to play professional in England. And my dad and my mom said, okay, and that was it. And from that moment on, they just did whatever they could. And I will never like discredit what they've done. And I know how hard it was in the family. There were moments where I thought they weren't going to keep on going. I wasn't going to keep on going. And I think just everything that they put themselves through made me want to do it 10 times more. Made me want to like pay it back to them. And I don't think I'll ever be able to pay back the sacrifices they made, but my dad researches everything. Like, he had... He heard that female players were tearing their ACLs more frequently than men. So he researched every little thing for me to do to prevent ACL tears. Like I was jumping, doing proper jumps, plyo stuff at the age of like 12 so that my knees wouldn't get hurt. And to this day, knock on wood, but like never had a bad knee injury. My structure's always been good. It's just because my dad committed to that. My mom, like the social aspect, she helped me stay stable. She helped me keep focus when I was like getting off course because every, every player gets off course. You lose your focus, you get injuries. I had a bad injury and I just lost my direction for a little bit. My mom brought me back on track. And that balance of the emotional control from my mother and the nerdy side of my father and just like the hoorah dad. <laughs> the crazy, everyone has that crazy parent. My dad ended up being that one. Um, definitely made me want to do it more and help me get to where I am. Yeah, Riley, that's powerful. That's very, very powerful. Um, Riley, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to let me interview you. I hope you all the best with your career. Thank you. Um, and before you leave, where can the viewers find you? I'm on Instagram, underscore Riley Foster, R-Y-L-E-E-F-O-S-T-E-R. -E -E um, but yeah, no, thank you for having me on this. I really appreciate it. It was a good chat. Thank you. All right.